What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today. So I looted out the rest of the map to save time. We got 8 gallons of gas at the end of the day, so 2 days worth. We replaced the gallon of gas we used today for the generator and we future stock for tomorrow. Unfortunately from here on out, I know I was trying to avoid scavenging from here on out, but unfortunately we're going to have to. We need to get as much gas as possible before things go seriously wrong with the generator. And so I think today we're just going to go on a gas run. That's it. We're going to hit different locations. We're going to see what kind of gas there is just available because we could definitely, definitely use it. So let me drop off my stuff here real fast. The scavenging is not something I relish the thought of, but honestly, this is like our first big scavenging session in probably like five episodes, five or six days. And so I'm feeling like it's time. We're running out of gas. I've been bypassing days as quickly as possible. I figure we should probably do some of those things at this point. We bought ourselves a little bit of time, but wasn't quite enough. Bud, what you got for me? Bud's got nothing. Actually, I might leave Bud with the lock pick just in case. I don't know if he can pick locks, but eh. We'll give it a try the next time we got to get through a door. Troy, nothing. That's actually sort of interesting how few weapons they picked up along the way. We need to figure out how to make gasoline. You can use, like, parts. So we could make a wood gasifier. I don't know if that's an option. But well, maybe if we can go into... I don't know if we can make fossil fuel or what we can do here. Or so not fossil fuel. We can make some kind of, like, corn fuel or anything. Frankly, the process is all similar. You just put, like, a barrel inside of a barrel. And the inside barrel is airtight. The outside barrel you put a fire in. And then you set the airtight barrel on the inside barrel. The inside barrel is the airtight barrel goes inside the outside barrel you light the fire and it just sits in there and you run a hose from the airtight barrel to like another receptacle and it should gasify just about any like organic product that you put in there so whether you're looking for ethanol or whether you're looking for you know anything really it should work out fine i don't suppose we can make gasoline can we no nope. looks like we can't unfortunately and i don't think there's anything we can build that'll let us do that either i think we got every upgrade let's see here yeah, we pretty much have every upgrade, so I think we're we're more or less done for right now. Let's get back out into the field. We got like one day to shore up our gas supply, and if I can get like 30, 40 gallons today, it'll allow us in the next recording session to keep breezing through days like we were before, which I actually found to be way more entertaining. Over scavenging seems to be what kills this game for me. All right, so now we're looking for other locations that would conceivably have a lot more gas, and we're only hitting them for the gas, so we're not going to hit any of these places for anything else, really. We just need... We need that fuel, so I figure a strip mall would probably have a lot of cars parked outside, right? So let's go for the strip mall and we'll see what we can find over here. Obviously if we see any events along the way, like there's some kind of like survivor thing going on where we have to save somebody, we'll try and do it. Just because I think it injects a little bit of extra flavor into the game. I don't know if injection is the right word to use. People seem to get nervous when they hear they're getting shots, but... Throw us the antibiotics and you can walk away with your lives. The flipped car over here. That's all that I really want, but I will take... Actually, just take all of it. It's okay. I'm going to swing around the outside. I'm not interested in getting any fights right now. I just want gas. Oh, never mind. It appears as though it has popped off without us. Which means we have little choice. So the changes they made still suck. Like, if there's people fighting on the other half of the map, it then locks you into combat. Silent Storm style, so... Still not a change that I agree with. Still not a change that I think was a good idea. I think that was actually a pretty terrible idea. The way that it worked before was fine. They needed to focus on specifically why the AI would allow you to go around corners and break off combat. Instead of just being like, if there's combat, it's now map wide and you have no choice but to be a part of it. And to be bored out of your mind while the AI, you know, 50 squares over, tries to kill each other. Seems like we got former cops in here. This fight appears to have popped off before we were even in the region, too. Ah, uh, he went around the wrong way. I'm going to go in with my wrong person here. Alright, well, not much I can do about it at this point, so... No point crying or getting upset over it. Come on, hurry up and take your turn so I can actually see what's going on with the combat. How about that? It seems like these looters are getting their asses whooped. I can't promise that's the way that it's going down, but it's what it sounds like, and it's what it looks like from the combat log. I think the Coyotes might be getting the better hand here. Wish I could see what was happening. It sounds like somebody's already down and dead, and I don't think they got any shots back off to deal with these guys. There are going to be a lot of Zeds heading to this area. It might be a decent idea, actually. Did somebody just throw a grenade? It might be a reasonably soft idea anyways to just hang out around the corner. And if they're not aware of us, then when they finish this combat and they get done killing each other, 
there's the chance that we might be able to walk away and just like loot all the bikes and everything. Still, I'm gonna set the rifle up and let's start taking shots. So there's 72 to the backside right there. Actually, we kind of hit him in the chest region. Wasn't to the backside. I'm gonna send in Troy, I guess. He'll be our Trojan gunner. And then we'll bring him up as well. We have grenades and things ready to go. Now that they know that they've been flanked, they might panic out and something weird might happen, but I'm going to watch out for Zeds because I know that we're going to have a whole bunch of them coming in here. Got one guy running up with a sledgehammer. We should have the time it required in order to put him on his ass. I hope. He's got no piercing resist either, so I think we might be able to do it without wasting any ammo too. Just sort of depends when I can get people into position. That's going to be the main limiting reagent right now in this whole strategical cocktail. He's badly wounded. Well, you need to step forward and make him even worse wounded. So there it is. He's even worse wounded. That means that now Troy has options to continue advancing. 100% right there. Let's put a round on him. They're already peeking out like the sound meter, so we might as well get, on this at the, get in on this at this point. I see no reason not to. I will clear out our bodies on the way in, though, just to make sure. Got cowardly looters in right there. Well, he's standing his ground. I mean, he's willing to face gunfire. From what I know about cowardliness, it's just... I mean, I would assume that a coward wouldn't face gunfire. He'd be the hell out of there. So anyways, he's, he's standing it down. I think that that cowardly modifier might be one of those things that might be unjustly given. I don't know if I would stare down gunfire. I'd be running out the back door trying to get the hell up out of there, jumping through windows and shit. I'm not getting shot at. I'm done with this deal. Mm-mm. I'm out. You can call me Finito Vamusolini. Do 49 right there. On this side, we'll get started on this little turd, and then we'll take a shot at her. Okay, just clean up the block real fast. Got no ammo left in the guns. Have him reload and just bypass some turns outside. It's weird that you can't see through glass windows in this game. I don't know, does that bother anybody else? I wish that you had line of sight through glass windows. And that also you could shoot through them and they would be breakable and like destructible. And uh, There's a lot of things that I wish would happen. There's a lot of things that I wish would happen. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem to go that way. It is what it is. I guess we can afford to move forward a little bit. These are probably going to get bit because I don't think I can get there in time to stop the zombie from doing it. I think everybody's bleeding out in here except for that one guy left. Good, go after the zombie. That's the... Absolutely. And you know what? I'd let you leave. I'd be like, you can leave if you want. I know I killed all your friends, but since you hit that zombie right there instead of me, and you stopped the zombie from getting to all your friends, well done, sir. Truce. I call a truce right now. And if one truce isn't enough, I call the deuce truce. That's actually when you call the cessation of a game of battle shits. It's called the deuce truce. It goes at the end. I don't know if any of you have ever played a game of battle shits, but it can be entertaining. It's weird the things that you do when you're out in the middle of the wilderness to pass time. I will admit. I will admit. That's the only time that I smoke, too. I always bring, like, cigars and stuff with me when I go out into the field because I, like, there's nothing to do. I get bored. I get really, really bored when I'm in the field and you're just sitting there. Because after, like, 5 or 6 o'clock, it gets dark, so you can't work anymore. But prior to that, you're working the entire time. But after 6 o'clock, nobody goes to bed, like, right at 6 o'clock when it gets dark. And so you end up in like a weird situation where there's nothing to do for like hours and hours and hours at a time except sit by the campfire and talk with people. And around about the fifth or eighth trip you've been out with the same people, you pretty much know everything there is to know about them. So you're like, eh, we're friends and everything, but we need to come up with some kind of way to pass time right now. We used to bring a horseshoe pit and we play horseshoes for a little bit, but that got vetoed. I don't remember why. We stopped playing horseshoes. I think somebody got in a fight or something over it. And so we had to like, we had to can the horseshoes for a while. I don't remember exactly why we stopped playing horseshoes. I know we had a horseshoe set that we would bring at one point, And then there was a reason that we stopped using it. And we stopped playing. And I think it was because people got into fisticuffs over it. People getting mad because they lost bets and things like that. People can't keep it in their pants and like keep calm. People trying to wear their testicles on the outside instead of just like being chill and being like, it's a game. You don't want to lose money, don't bet money. How's that sound? Just have like a friendly exhibition game. Instead, you got people running 20, 40 bucks in the hole on a game of horseshoes getting all mad because they're getting their asses whooped because they're bad at it. Taking it out on the other player who's good at it. Well, yeah, don't bet money if you don't want to lose money. That seems like that seems like one of those basic rules of life that somebody should have popped in at some point during your life and just been like, hey, 
don't bet money if you're going to get mad about losing money. I realize you thought you were good at horseshoes, but scientific evidence up until this point has gone to prove the opposite. It seems to be that you are very, very bad at horseshoes, and so maybe don't play horseshoes for real money anymore, huh? about that, chief? Smack a Z right there. A little bit more damage done. We got a big ass cleanup job to do in here. This is going to take a while. I'm going to leave them outside to deal with the zombies as they flow through. And then we'll take a look at all these cars and vehicles and see what gas we can get out of them because that's really that's my main objective right now. If I can loot gas, that's great. Everything else is secondary. So we want to look in parking lots. We want to look for cars. Anything that's out here that we can get our hands on. Just a couple gallons at a time. I think if this in the next episode we can get maybe 25, 30 gallons. We'll be good on ammunition, we'll be good on gas, because we did use up a lot of our gasoline in order to make ammunition, which was weird. I'm not really sure why that was necessary. I would have preferred, actually, if they would allow you to disassemble bullets into bullet parts, casings, and gunpowder. And then after that, they would just give you a freebie and let you reassemble them into any, like, chambering that you wanted. That's what would have made me happy. That's the system that I would have implemented, just give people freedom. Like, if you want to break a 5.56 and magically convert it into a 9mm... It'll take, like, maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes per bullet or something like that, but, eh. You know, you've been in enough firefights to where I'm going to assume that your characters are collecting the brass after every fight so that you can redo everything, and so there you go. Just, like, assume, like, certain... You just make certain assumptions within the parameters of the game and just let, let people rechamber what they have for whatever they need or allow them to make a gun press later on in the game or capture one that they have to hold and everybody else fights for it because it's, like, bolted to the floor or something. Just whatever you prefer. Anything to spice up the gameplay at this point. I would have liked to have seen a control mechanism over the map in this game too, but it just didn't go down that way. So why can't I... Oh, I'm at a diagonal. That's why I can't attack you. I was going to say, what shenanigans is this? What witchcraft, what sorcery is keeping me from attacking you, sir? 64 right there. We should be able to finish it right there. Down he goes. Leaves us with one Z left. Let's get in here and loot it on up. I'd actually like to start top to bottom because it's easier for me to keep things organized if I loot in order. So no bullets left right there, which means I'm just going to bring back the commodity items because it seems to make pretty people pretty happy. Commodity items right here too. No bullets left. This firefight actually was pretty much full bore. It was just about as heated as a firefight could get. They went through all their ammo just trying to kill each other. I don't care about the 38 rounds, so I'll probably leave those on the ground for right now. We'll loot this dude for a little bit. Probably leave him to choke too. Hopefully they don't res. But we should be the hell out of here by the time that that happens. I will take the freestanding ammo though. Got a couple of goodies right there, a little bit of food, some shotgun shells, which I will heartily accept. Got parts and a bunch of other goodies in here. I didn't really want that shotgun, so we can if we can unload that, that would be great. It sounds like our friends have finally expired. Like just about everything in my fridge right now. I haven't been shopping in a while. I've been sufficing off of just like fresh fruit and things like that for a couple days. I explained already. And been going cardio like super hard trying to tone up for the summer. And unfortunately, I my best way that I can keep myself from like binge eating bad things for me is just not to have them in the house. And so largely, there's a gallon right there. What's everybody else got for me, huh? I know some of these cars got to have something in them. Alright, I'll take it since I'm here. But unfortunately, that was not the yield that I was looking for. This truck over here. Half gallon right there. A Z on that side who's blocking off our passage to the semi truck. Did I get it already? I think I was headed over this way. Oh, it's not lootable anyways. Okay, so keep moving because that Z's going to wake up. We'll go around the back side of the building and we'll just keep an eye on everything that we can. Probably go back in and try and loot everything from the pharmacy since, well, hell, we've already basically hit all the gas supplies right here. A gallon and a half was a lot less than what I was expecting, but I guess we're 70 days into the apocalypse right now. Gas is going to be at a premium. Until you can get more of it. These guys all have the same kit out. Cigarettes, tobacco, and porn. What oh, is about tobacco and porn? Like, they keep putting them together, but whatever. I guess you gotta smoke afterwards, so that makes sense. But if you got the chaw, what the hell would you need cigarettes for? Most people I know don't chew and smoke. They do one or the other. Got that chaw up and in there. They got cigarettes, but not both. Sorry, I was staring at the loot that we were pulling from the shelves right now. Every now and again, I'm just like, Rrr, Rrr, and I have like a little brain stroke in here. Grab everything. This place actually seems to have a pretty good yield as far as commodities, antibiotics, and other good stuff goes. However, it didn't help us out much with the gas, so 
One good thing, one bad thing, I guess. Let's get up in the back room and we'll check their stock room real fast. Got bug spray, which I forgot to give to anybody, so I should probably do that before the end of the episode, too, because I will totally forget by the next time that I record that I was supposed to give away bug spray. I'll forget. I will totally forget. So let's give him a little bit of a whooping right there. Okay, whooping accomplished. That car is not lootable, which is disappointing in many, many different new and exciting vectors. I don't suppose there'd be gas in the trash, right? There would be a lot of parts, though, so I'll take those. Come on, somebody around here has got to have gas. No grass right there, neither. Hmm. I suppose maybe they have a propane storage, like a propane. Nope, they don't. All right, well, we're done with this place. Let's keep on trucking. I'm going to try and maybe hit another location in the next episode and just try and keep that gas flowing. But for right now, I'm going to go give the wasp stuff. I just picked up some, which is why I remembered. I'm going to go give the wasp spray to Doubleday so that she can take care of that problem. Hopefully nobody gets stung and gets sick. That would really, really suck for us. I can't afford to lose any more survivors right now. The last couple of days, we've really, really, really been piling it on with regards to just, like, getting rid of people. We had to execute Grant. We lost Paul. It's all kinds of things. I guess Nash came in, so that's a plus. Let me grab the items that we need out of storage, and that'll give me an opportunity to unload all the goodies that we picked up previously as well. Not really goodies that... I don't know if they would count as goodies. I don't know. Either way. Get them things going, everybody. We've got... Nash, Nash, what do you have? He just has a hunting rifle. Okay, we'll select all and take all his stuff because we need it. And then if I stock everything... Stock as much as I can anyways. Hopefully that'll make some people happy. Back in here we need Troy. Troy's not loaded up with anything. And then we need Bud. Who is also not loaded up with anything. We do have a reload in front of us though that we need to take care of. So to Tweedle time. Unique items. We're going to need... Where's the wasp spray at? Well, hell. There it is. At least we found it quick that time. That's the bonus. Sometimes it takes me forever to find stuff in this game. So since we have the wasps array, we should be able to take this over to Double Day. And that should get rid of the issues that have been bugging us lately. Wasps aren't too big of a deal unless the hive gets really, really out of control. You gotta nip it in the bud. Where did she go? Sandy! Oh, what the hell? What job is she doing right now? I hate the walking around thing. That's another dumb change that I dislike. She's doing relaxation. So now that they walk around, you gotta track them around. You gotta track them down, do whatever the hell it is that they're doing. I like when they just stood around. Honestly, because their walking doesn't seem to have any point anyways. Relaxation room should be... Yeah, there it is. I was gonna say. Yes. Here's the spray. It's about time. I'll handle the wasp tonight. Thank you would be the word. Thank you would be the word that you would want to give out. It's a miracle nobody got stung. Let's hope we don't have anything else take their place. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and bypass the day for right now because I'd like to get into the next day's drama before I end the episode. Morale up a little bit. I really feel like the morale is hurting us right now. Maybe it's the okay mood right there. I don't know. I'll have to go back in. Maybe I'll have to give out some stuff to get people into a better mood. Craig looks red-eyed and haunted. I had a nightmare about the baby. It was... I don't want to talk about it. I just need a day to get it out of my head. Bad thoughts multiply when you're alone. But get squelched when you're in good company. Keep yourself around people today. It'll be better for you. I guess you're right. Around people. Okay. That's it, huh? That's all we got? Well, let's take a look and see who's all grumped out in our shelter right now. We should also probably take a look at our character. We've got 14 skills ready to go. So I think we should probably work on that, too. Let's top out, we got Animal Magnetism. I keep going back to that one, and I guess that it might be useful someday, but I'm going to go with Medical first and see what we get out right there. We get a plus 10 HP bonus to all allies. That seems good. That works. I'm a little bit of range skill up front, too. We'll start working out all these meters and seeing where we can end up. Anyways, at the shelter, who's grumped out? We have Elaine Martin, who is unhappy. Nothing else uncommon right there. With Elaine Martin, we'll go back through then. Let's give her, I think she wanted deodorant, and she wanted, let's pick up as many of the random, they're going to play Delivery Boy for right now, and just try to make people happy. Let's pick up all of our random unique stuff that we can give out to people. So we've got spices, a deodorant, so let's take that, 
We've got batteries, as I recall, chocolate, cigars. We've got coffee, bourbon. You can't carry anymore, can you? Okay. What about sleeping pills? Maybe bring the batteries instead? Okay, you can't bring that either. Weed seems to be fairly popular with people, too. It's gonna be the bourbon that's weighing us down. Let's get the hot sauce up in there. Yup. Got that hot sauce. We got, what else do we have? 27 dog tags, kind of a... Oh, those are sleeping pills. Let's go with those then. There we go. So now we should have most of the general purpose stuff that people want in order to be happy. With her up here. Let's go upstairs and see if we can get her up to happy. Since she's been a little bit low lately. This is the first time I've ever had to deal with like morale problems. So I guess that's that. We'll give these... There's deodorant. Okay. I'll probably go with like three of them. Okay, so let's check and see how she's doing now. That is not what I desired. She's still unhappy. Wow, she must be like really, really, really low down because we just gave her a bunch of shit. We've also got Bud unhappy. We've got Oscar unhappy. Okay, well. Let's see if we can help her break the threshold right there. I don't know if that's going to dig us out, but I'm trying. Okay, so she's in an okay mood right now. Let's keep on working it up. There it is. And so that should put her on the upper threshold, I think. She's content, but she's not happy. Do I have anybody that's happy? We've had a lot of deaths lately, so I don't know. Let's go find Joel since he's up next. Joel, where are you at, buddy? I'll probably do this off camera, too, just to make sure that everybody's like squared away with their issues before we go any further. Joel, where are you hiding at? Now that everybody moves around, this gets a lot more difficult. Not in there, not in there, not in there. Nope, 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 no! Ah, damn it, Joel. Are you around the outside wall? The perimeter, if I remember my geometry classes correctly? From like the third grade? A Troy right there. There he is. Joel, what can I do for you? But I think he likes hot sauce. He likes hot sauce and chocolate. Well, I got a lot of hot sauce, so let's get you started off real fast. Go with three bottles of hot sauce. How's that strike you? Hopefully not too painfully. Throwing bottles of hot sauce at people is a dick move. Goals. Joel is back up to content, okay? Anita Cass liked fancy chocolates, as I recall, because she was one of our earlier characters. But you know what? I'm going to break this one off a little bit short. This seems kind of boring. With Anita, I'm just going to go around and see if I can give people like the things that they want in order to make them happy. And if I can get that squared away before the next episode, that'll leave us in a much better position to stop like dwindling away on our supplies and whatnot. So I'll see you all there. Hi to everybody. I'll see you next time.